Well, good evening. I'm Dale Cox for Two Egg TV. I'm here with Rachel Conrad, as always. And we have a very special treat for you tonight. We have been invited uh, to do a paranormal investigation and a historical investigation at the Old City Hall in Chipley, Florida. This is in Washington County. It's part of uh, the Old Spanish Trail or Historic Highway 90 Corridor. Uh, and this is a fascinating place. Uh, what do you think about it already, Rachel? It's beautiful, and I think if I was a ghost, I'd want to hang out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, and supposedly there are some that do. We're going to find out about those as we go this evening. Plus, we have um, really some special treats for you. We have some people who are going to tell us about the history of the building and about Washington County, which is a fascinating place. It is, it's gorgeous. There are so many things here and so much beautiful water to swim in. And um, this is a charm in Washington County. And this building is historic, as you mentioned. We're gonna have a good time. Yeah, in fact, this is on the National Register of Historic Places. This is our second opportunity to do an investigation at a site on the National Register of Historic Places. The other one is the Bellamy Bridge site in right. Jackson County. Um, this this, this structure is really, really gorgeous. It has some pretty cool stories associated with it. We're going to hear some of those. We're also going to be, as the evening rolls along, hearing some other stories about Washington County, some of its mysteries and, and mayhem, um, but also some of the cool things about the county and places you can visit and things like that. Um, I've been looking at some of their brochures that they have around here, and, and there's some cool things here. You can do anything from here, the wolves howl, to uh, you know, check out nature at its, uh, at its finest, look at history, just see all kinds of things here. Um, and speaking of nature at its finest and wild things, uh, joining us in a few minutes is going to be Crystal Ganey from Antler Doe Outdoors. She's one of our correspondents, and you have some up close and personal time with Crystal here in Washington County. I have. Crystal uh, took me on an adventure mm -hmm. down Holmes Creek, Holmes and Snakes. boy, let me tell you, that was fun and wild. Um, we went, we had mud all over us at the end. There was water. Um, it was just an adventure. You're going to love Crystal. Uh, she's going to be a great addition to our team. Yeah, and uh, Crystal's going to be leading our group of paranormal investigators tonight. We figured that if she could handle the water and the wild alligators and said she could handle a, a ghost adventure. Yeah, and if you know Crystal, there's nothing normal about her, so paranormal is right, right in line with what she does. Um, I've been with her into the depths of the Ochizi Pond swamps. We have been with her on the creeks and the springs. Mm -hmm. We have learned new um, snake hunting techniques from her. We sure have. And um, I've even been monkey hunting with her of late. So there's, there's a lot that, uh, that she has taught us. She is probably knows more about the woods and the outdoors and nature in Northwest Florida than anyone I've ever met. Um, and that's saying something because I count among my ancestors both um, Yuchi Native Americans uh, and, you know, the frontiersman Daniel Boone. And uh, I like to think I knew a lot about, or like to think that I knew a lot about the outdoors till I met Crystal, and, and, and she's really amazing in her knowledge. And um, I think uh, you're gonna love her personality that she brings to this ghost hunt tonight. Let me tell you a little bit about what we already have going on here. Okay. Now, because this building is supposedly haunted, and, and in fact, may be the most haunted structure here in Chipley, um, we have already uh, done a sweep um, looking for EMF readings or um, you know electromagnetic frequencies and to see if there's anything uh, abnormal showing before we begin our work. Uh, see if anything's abnormal before we come in and really make it abnormal. <laughs> um, and then we, uh, we have our night vision cameras set up. They are recording already. And so we're going to see what those show us before we actually get into some of these areas uh, and uh, disturb things uh, as we always do. Because if you want to see something disturbing, it's us when we get into a place. And uh, so we're, we're going to, we've been recording with those already. We're going to go through that footage later and, and see what it shows so that uh, we can share that with, uh, with the viewers as well. We think it's going to be a fun time. Um, and so when we come back, we're going to uh, check in with Crystal 
who is upstairs already beginning her investigation, along with, with our friend Samantha, who is a colonial historian. And who else would you bring on a ghost hunt but a colonial historian? It makes absolute sense. And Samantha has a wonderful personality. She is a great researcher. And so she brings an element to this uh, adventure that no one else has. And, um, and I think she'll, she'll enjoy it. Uh, we'll see if she can handle um, the dark corners. We felt like we needed someone with academic experience and uh, academic credentials so that we could bring them into one of our shows and completely destroy their reputation. Uh, but uh, Why not? yeah, we thought we'd put her together with Crystal and, and uh, that should give us the, the two ends of the, you know, we bring someone who is um, really um, nature experienced and who knows uh, knows how to sense and to feel the things around them who's very uh, in tune with their surroundings. And someone who can kind of analyze. Someone who with the analytical analytical brain to look at the historical perspective and the scientific perspective and we're going to see what the two there of them come up with. There are some really cool historical stories connected here. Yeah, there, there are. This is, uh, and, and we, we're joking a lot um, and we're talking a lot about you know, stories of ghosts, but this also, uh, as we mentioned, this structure is on the National Register of Historic Places, so there is a lot uh, about it that is highly significant, and we're going to be spending some time talking about that, and so we wanted a, a, an academic historian with us as well a, as we look at that. But we're going to check in with them in just a moment, um, and uh, then we're going to have an interview um, uh, with Heather Lopez, who heads uh, Visit Washington County, Florida, which is the uh, arm of the Tourist Development Council here. We're going to learn a little bit about the building from her um, and what it's like to work in a haunted visitor center. So that's coming up next, so stay tuned. to our uh, ghost hunt here at the Old City Hall in Chipley, Florida, Washington County. And uh, before we join Heather here and we talk a little bit about her experience uh, working in the building and a little bit about this historic structure, let's go upstairs and check in with uh, Crystal and Samantha and see what's going on. So uh, what's happening up there? All right, you guys, we're fixing to go upstairs. This is where Miss Heather's office is at. Um, and there's a conference room up there that they've had a whole lot of activity, some questionable things. And this is up a little closer to Millie's Tower. Molly's Tower. Sorry, Molly's Tower. Follow us. Come on. See if we get anything in the stairwell. It's chilly in here. Definitely is. Cooler than it was down there. Yeah, my temperature's moving now. I can feel it. I could definitely, definitely feel something in that. Without even looking at this, I could feel the temperature in that stairwell. Could be a draft. Let's see what happens up here. Is your temperature stay in put or is it fluctuating? It's fluctuating. Mine's fluctuating big too. Like a good bit. This room definitely has a cold spot right here behind the desk. Yeah, closer I get to it, I can see it. Did you hear that squeak? Go you check it out. Like yes, ma'am, I'm coming. Also, temperature drop. Yeah, definite. As soon as I walked over here, I started getting in the 20s. Hey, where did you go? Where did you go? Maybe it's. You think me. Robert might have moved? Nah, <laughs> we're good. Yeah. 
He's running from us. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, hear it, yeah. Oops. Definitely in this corner. All right, we're going to be checking back in with uh, Crystal and Samantha a lot more as the evening goes along, uh, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully, they'll stir up something interesting as the night goes along. Now, we're joined with Heather Lopez, and Heather, you're the director, I guess is your title? Yes. Uh, uh, Visit Washington County, which is the, the official name of the Tourist Development Council's outreach here for Washington County. And you work here in the old City Hall building, which I have to admit is one of the most beautiful buildings in Northwest Florida. First off, tell us a little bit about the building. Um, it's a historic structure, like you said. Um, it's uh, two stories, uh, original wood flooring. Um, it's, it's a beautiful old building and we love being here. Um, this, this structure, um, uh, for, for people who are not familiar with it, it's got a beautiful Mediterranean style to it. It's got the old iron gate outside the, the tower. There's just something about it that just catches the eye, you know, and the beautiful red brick um, and everything like that. Now, how long have you been, been here? Um, I've been in the building for 11 years. 11 years, mm -hmm. wow. Um, the, uh, there are a lot of stories about this place. Um, tell us, uh, before we get into anything you may or may not have experienced here, uh, what are some of the stories you've heard? Um, I, I have heard that it's haunted. In fact, uh, that's what I was told when I started working here. Um, and that, you know, people that have been in the building in the past had had experiences that they couldn't explain. Um, and that there was a lot of um, legends attached to this building, even, you know, when it was being constructed. Now, working here, I have to ask the obvious question. There, there got to be times you find yourself alone in this building. Um, do you get a little bit of a chill, just wondering? Um, sometimes. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's just because of the stories I've heard, um, but yeah, sometimes it feels a little creepy. <laughs> yeah. Do you, have you had anything happen that you or heard a sound or anything that made you wonder if there's anything in here? Um, I mean, I have heard some sounds, um, but it is an old building, mm -hmm. so I don't know if it's, you know, just the old building creaking or, you know, if it's something else. Um, what do you think? Do you what do you think about these stories like this? I mean, I find Chipley fascinating. Washington County itself fascinating because there are so many of them. And one thing I wonder about is because in Chipley's past you had a fire, um, or in its early days of the history of the city, which was a railroad community. Mm -hmm. And when the fire happened, so much of the town was rebuilt at the same time. And in this little cluster of a couple of blocks here, you have so many of these stories. Um, I find that intriguing. What do you think about that? Yeah, um, it, there's a lot of rich history in the downtown area, a lot of legends, a lot of old stories, and I think they add to the character of our town. Chipley, for people who are not familiar with it, um, is built unlike other communities in Northwest Florida. It's built facing the railroad, mm -hmm. whereas other towns may have a, a town square or built facing a main street. Chipley's built facing the railroad. Why is that? I don't know. It's okay. Just keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> you know, you can just tell them. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Well, that's a question we'll ask uh, Dorothy, who's from the Historical Society, about, and we'll learn more about that. But it does give it kind of an Old West feel, almost. You know, I lived out west in Fort Smith, Arkansas, which was very, was kind of, they called it the gateway to the Old West, and it had a very similar feel to this. It's like you expect gunfighters to walk out on the streets, um, and the trains come through the middle of town. Um, and there are a lot of stories, you know, I think um, that gives you almost like you're in a touch of the Old West, but you're really down here in, in North Florida. Um, tell us a little bit about your job and what you do and, and what makes Washington County so special to you as a, as, as a resident because you've lived here for a long time. Um, so what I do, I promote uh, tourism for the county, so I try and encourage people to come in and experience um, the things that people that live here experience every day. And 
Um, I have lived here most of my life and it's a beautiful area. We have a lot of uh, natural landscape. We have a lot of wildlife. Um, we have some beautiful natural springs mm -hmm. and um, a lot of really cool experiences um, that you can only get in our county as such as our wolf preserve, um, which is one of the rarest experiences in um, the entire United States. Uh, you actually get to go inside the enclosure and interact with them. Um, we have a gator farm, which is really popular with tourists because of course, one of the things they wanna see when they come to Florida is an alligator. Mm -hmm. um, we also have hiking and biking and uh, horseback riding trails. So it's just a, a wide range of outdoor activities. Um, but we also have a lot of history here. So a lot of historic sites. We have a geocaching trail um, where you can go to 32 different um, historic sites all through the county because um, we have a lot of history with the turpentining and na naval stores and the railroad and, um, you know, the paddle boats that went up and down the rivers and the creeks. So it's just a really cool place. It's um, it's the epitome of old Florida, and um, it's just a great place to live. You have Florida's tallest waterfall. We do, we do. Our deepest waterfall. I yeah. don't know which way to describe it. <laughs> it's uh, 73 feet. It falls into a limestone sink um, at our state park, Falling Water State Park, and it's a beautiful park, and it's a beautiful waterfall. Okay. All right, well, let's go back upstairs and see what's going on up there. Um, let me ask you this, is it going to unnerve you a little bit if they're up there in the area where your office is and they actually find something tonight? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, well let's find out what's going on. Let's go up there. Samantha and Crystal are up there. Crystal, what's happening? My favorite thing so far, especially about the building, has been the brickwork. The brickwork is absolutely amazing. I don't even think that brick masons these days can do that. Um, the windows you were talking about. The windows are lovely, they're long and they have arches and so it's just beautiful and very, um, kind of accentuates the room I feel. Yeah. It brings in the light. I got some pretty cool old hardware on the, the hand, the windows. Mm -hmm. I like the way that they open. It's not like the ones that we have these days. Uh, the building itself is, is super neat. It's got, you walk into like a little uh, foyer with the lock and gate behind it and mm -hmm. It's just, it, it says old world Florida. I mean, that's really what it is. Everywhere you go in, the, uh, in this building, I guarantee you, you'll find a tall ceiling. You'll find gorgeous windows. You'll see the amazing detail in the brickwork that Crystal's talking about. You have the nice wooden flooring. Um, yeah. Definitely, I would feel if you were spending the night here with these wood floorings, you will be hearing a lot of um, ghost work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. these old wood floors here are pretty awesome. It's tongue and groove all throughout the building. It's got these big, big ceilings in it with wood, uh, like wood ceilings too. It's pretty nice, yes. it's really nice. Makes me proud to know it's in, in my hometown. All right, they're continuing their search. So let's talk a little bit more about Washington County. And since, um, since it's Halloween, we'll have a little bit of fun. I find mysteries to be interesting and, and um, not all mysteries are, are spooky. There, there are a lot of other mysteries around. And one of my favorite mysteries about Washington County is the possibility that um, an extinct bird still exists here. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, yes, the ivory-billed woodpecker. Um, it's rumored to be extinct, but uh, there are people that still say they see it on the Choctahatchee um, in the cypress swamps. Um, it's, a, it's a really, really large bird and um, very distinct knocking pattern. So um, they've had Auburn University was the last to come out and investigate, and they, um, they swear they have evidence that it still lives. Um, you know, in that uh, watershed. And, um, you know, we still have an ornithologist that comes down and um, sets up equipment um, on his property to try and capture the sounds. Um, so it's, it's still very much alive with some of the bird hunters and, and they're still trying to find it here. So if you're a birder um, and you really want to make a mark for yourself um, in the birding community, um, you know, this would be the place to come and spend your vacation and, and, and see what you can find. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's kind of cool. Um, 
Some of the other things here that are, are mysterious, there's a place called Boynton Island down where the Choctahatchee River and um, Holmes Creek come together. Tell us a little bit about Boynton Island. Um, Boynton Island has a, a history. Um, they they used to float the lo the cypress logs um, down the river, and um, there was a gentleman that lived on the island, and um, you know they used to play music and stuff. And and now uh, the legend is that when you're when you're going down um, the Choctahatchee, when you go by the island at night, um, that sometimes they can still hear uh, the fiddle playing and stuff coming from the island. So it's it's very mysterious. <laughs> that, 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 that actually is pretty good. I've been on Boynton Island and I can tell you that it's uh, pretty mysterious. I've actually seen our friend Crystal, who is upstairs roaming the building right now, um, run through Boynton Island Swamp barefooted. <laughs> so um, it was a sight to behold, I promise you. Um, the uh, uh, Washington County, um, a beautiful place, a lot of pristine uh, nature here. Um, I got to ask you, with all the, all the public lands that there are here, places to get out, for people to get outdoors and explore, are there any Bigfoot stories here? I have not heard any of those. Uh, I'm sure we have some, but I have not heard any personally. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there are too. Um, any other any other good stories that you that you think people should know about? Um, we do have a possum monument, um, which is uh, pretty unique to us uh, in Wausau, Florida. In 1962, mm -hmm. they erected our possum monument, and it is a um, homage to uh, the marsupial for keeping the early settlers alive as a food source and they also use the furs to keep them warm in the winter um, and they mark it with a festival in uh, the first Saturday in August every year so it's a pretty uh, unique festival they have a king and queen contest which is not the prettiest but actually the ugliest um, and then uh, they have a possum auction so it's pretty cool. And let me tell you, you better bring your uh, bread or bring your bill full, full if you plan to enter the poss possum auction. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's actually is a it's a great piece of Americana um, to come to that festival. And uh, if you're uh, planning to be traveling uh, in Florida uh, and you want to see something that is just a, just a unique piece of Americana. Um, and uh, that, that, that is a piece of it. That is just really something that's, I guess it's over 50 years old now. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. been going on for a good while. So um, yeah, that is, that is a great one. Um, so thank you very much, Heather, for yep. telling us about Washington County and for being part of our event and for letting us, uh, letting us come in here. Yep. So um, I think Crystal is going to try to explore the tower. So let's check in with you, Crystal, what's going on? All right, y'all, we're up here. I don't know if we're hunting for ghosts or if we're just kind of checking out the stories, but this is the coolest. We're in Washington County at the, um, the Chamber of Commerce building. This building here has been for years. It's one of the oldest, most historical sites in my home county here. So I'm pretty excited to be here. This room right here particularly, we haven't got the most readings throughout the entire room, but we did, we got an EMF on the other side of the wall where there's a little kitchenette. And what did you get over next to the door? Now over there by the door, which we think uh, leads into Molly's Tower, it, we got a low drop in the temperature right there. You can feel the cold air. Yeah, you, you, could, could, feel. you could physically feel it before, mm -hmm. the, before mm -hmm. you even see it on the reader. So, all right, we're gonna send you guys back downstairs so that we can go check out another room. So I'm back here with Dorothy and she's going to tell us about some ghost stories around the county. Um, what are your favorites? Oh, there are so, there's so many to choose from. Um, most of the, my favorites are based on historical events that have happened. Um, one of those right here in Shipley over on First Street is the Lime Sink where young Nettie McMillan um, drowned. Uh, there was also a little Callaway girl that drowned there. Uh, her body was recovered, but I think the mystique with Nettie was that her body was never recovered. And uh, when she drowned, they wore the long dresses. Yay, a train! 
Um, and they believe that her skirt probably became snagged on some of the roots mm -hmm. and um, they just never found it. We have pictures at the museum where they actually uh, dynamited and dredged the lime sink looking for her body, but it was never found. And so the ghost story is that on a perfect moonlit night, <laughs> always a perfect moonlit night, um, when all of the, everything is perfect, uh, you will see Nettie floating above the lime sink. Um, my husband, who was born and raised here, lived about 300 yards from the lime sink, grew up there, and he said they tried all the time to see Miss Nettie, but they, they never did. Um, but, you know, who knows? Maybe she's there, but it's a wonderful story. Um, and how So she was just waiting in the water? They were told not. It was a very hot summer day. You know, we have those in Florida. Occasionally. And um, they were told not to go in the water. They were not supposed to. And so... Um, when it became apparent two of the girls were in trouble, they yelled for help, and one of the brothers came and actually was able to save um, one young girl, and then the other two drowned, but they were able to recover um, Tabitha Calloway's body. I mean, she's buried out at Rock Hill Church Cemetery. Mm. Um, so it's tragic in that, that they never recovered her body. The, um, one of the important things about Nettie is she is the daughter of Angus McMillan, who was one of the five men who actually went to Colonel Chipley and had the railroad put here. It was slated to go much further uh, south, down around Pioneer Road um, at Orange Hill. And they had bought property up here. He hmm. came back from the Civil War, bought property up here instead of out at Orange Hill. And so he wanted the railroad to come where he had property. One of the other men was uh, Mr. Van, Van Kirk. He bought the 80 original acres that would be sold and become Chipley proper and um, he sold the lots facing the railroad, and, and so that's how Chipley grew, was through him buying it and then selling it affordably so that the people could settle here. But so Nettie was the daughter of Angus, who we consider one of the founders of Chipley. How cool, and so her father helped change history. She did, he did. <laughs> and then she changed local folklore. Yes. She did forever, yeah. And they even dy dynamited it, and her body has never, never surfaced been found. to this day. Um, they said they have put ping pong balls down, and they've come up. I want to say they came up at Falling Waters, but yeah. so the underground um, aquifer, um, they, you know, she could be wedged horrifically in um, a tunnel or something down there, but but her body just never surfaced. Oh my goodness. What's another one? Um, another one, and they're tragic, you know, most ghost stories are tragic, come from tragedy. Um, uh, John Dykes, who was a post postal delivery person down in the south of the county back in the days when we had turpentine, mm. um, what you call them, turpentine farms, where yeah. people were digging the turpentine, and they were whole communities. And so he was in charge of delivering that mail out. And mm. so there was one of the overseers on the turpentine um, place that was not delivering mail to the workers as like punishment. And so oh. he went down and he kind of you know had words with them and, and told him you know he couldn't do that. And the next, like the next day, that man was murdered. He, he was found dead. And so everybody went after John Dykes because they had just had a quarrel the day before. And so he was arrested and taken to the courthouse, the jail, when it was still in Vernon, when the um, county seat was in Vernon. And the sheriff at that time just happened to be out of the county. He was down in Bay County on some other business. And a lynch mob went and removed him from the jail and hung him. He is buried on Highway 77 in Dyke Cemetery, um, down around Greenhead, and that ghost story is said that on a perfect moonlit night, <laughs> when the atmosphere is just right, um, he appears in the road. He will just be standing in the road, and so I have actually talked to several people who have seen this, this apparition. Um, one of them was driving an ambulance, and they actually turned around and went back because they saw it in the rearview mirror and thought that, you know, somebody was standing in the road. And so they went back um, to mm -hmm. check on it. So um, they say that John Dykes, you know, he's not settled, he's not rested. He was um, lynched for something that, that he probably did not do. And um, after his death, um, the whole Dykes family just suffered uh, quite a lot of um, mm -hmm. 
just tragedy. The tornado came through and, and tore up their houses, and it was just not a good time in history for them. But um, So that's another good one, and it's, it's down in the south end of the county. Wow, what a crazy story. It is, it is. They don't describe what he's wearing. They just describe a person in the um, red. He's, he's got, you know, a dark, kind of a dark suit on. Okay. Um, you know, probably what he was buried in. Mm -hmm. And um, no, just that you just look in your rearview mirror and he's standing where you just drove. <laughs> Talk about not resting. Yeah. That's what happened to Mary Nepper, too. Yes, Mary. <laughs> but, Bless her heart. But Mary Nepper um, kind of has a happier... A she con does. connotation <laughs> to it. Tell us about that. Um, Mary Nepper um, passed away, um, went into some kind of a coma or stupor where she was pronounced dead and um, was buried up at the cemetery here in Chipley and Glenwood. And um, back in those days, we had a preponderance of grave robbers. They, mm. You were buried in your finery. And so they found that that was a way that they could go and get things that they could get money for. So that night, someone went up to dig up Miss Mary's grave, and when they did, she was alive. She sat up, um, much to their surprise, I'm sure. So um, Miss Mary was, you know, she was brought home, and she went on to um, have, I think, two or three more children. Um, so not only was she alive, but she was very healthy <laughs> um, after that. So uh, when they buried her again, Mm -hmm. um, they did not inter her in the ground. Her um, her plot her is is over the ground. It was a mausoleum. Is that what it's called? I, a crypt. A crypt. A crypt. So hers is above the ground. There's one of just a few at Glenwood that is above the ground, and um, so no really ghost stories attached with her. But the but story of her alive. The is story. Funny. Of, the story of her alive. Um, and, that, and sadly, that happened a lot. It mm -hmm. was the birth of um, several things that have, that have become part of our economy in our uh, culture. Um, you know, you hear about the midnight shift. Well, they, they had to start having someone watch the cemeteries at night I and mean, listen for, you know, people that might be alive. Bell ringers, they put strings in the coffin that had a bell attached to them. So if you were alive and you needed to get out, you could pull the string and the bell would ring and they could come and, and help you out. So um, things that we kind of take, you know, we just use the words of the euphemism now, um, were born in a very a real need um, because people were being buried alive. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love that story. <laughs> as crazy as it is. Um, my goodness, that's crazy. Um, and it all happened here in Washington County. Right here. This is a great place to visit. It is fun. Um, we. We like to share our history, our stories. That we we don't always share the ghost stories. We we kind of um, save those for people that ask for them. But um, I'm not from Washington County. I'm a military brat that uh, trying to transplant it here, and um, I just find it all fascinating. Also, when I right. tell someone that's lived here all their life something I found out, they just they're like, yeah, <laughs> you don't think that's really neat, you know, and. So sometimes it takes an outsider mm -hmm. to really um, to really get how special a place is, and, and Washington County just has that. It just has a, a little of everything. It has um, excitement. Um, and Mr. Cox was talking earlier about um, you felt like you were in the old west. There could have been gunfights. Well, there were right here in Chipley, and uh, we have those stories in in some of our books there at the museum. And um, so the, you know it was an exciting place. Um, coming to its, you know, into its life, and, and, and we like to share that as much as possible. <laughs> I love it. Gunfights, mysteries, railroads, um, people alive in the grave, <laughs> people never getting found when they drown. I know. This is a wild place. It's a wild country. Wild Washington County. Wild Washington County. <laughs> I love it. So let's see what's going on in Upstairs. our ghost tent. Yes. Ooh. So it's been a fun time. Um, it's so exciting. I it is exciting it. to watch I, it go mm -hmm. to beeping. And also, I love it when it when I get to actually see the temperature fluctuate. So it's, I'm not to myself thinking like, is it getting hot and cold, or is that just me? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that is that is cool because mine dropped like a whole ten degrees in one corner of a room earlier. So it is pretty exciting to be able to see on here mm -hmm. what we kind of are feeling. But uh, I guess for now we're gonna go explore some more. We'll see you later. Oh my goodness. All right. They're getting deep in it upstairs. Oh my goodness. 
All right, so um, Dorothy Odom is here, and um, tell us a little bit about the history of this beautiful building. Okay, it was built in the early 1920s. Um, is the city hall. The rear housed the fire department. The fire truck was back there. It was kind of a lean-to building. Um, so it was a you know multi-purpose building. Uh, during its construction, um, there is where one of our stories come from. Mm. It's about uh, Miss Molly. Uh, we like to refer to the tower as Miss Molly's Tower. Um, the young man that was doing the brickwork on the tower um, laid eyes on her one day and fell deeply in love. Uh, she was walking to school, which would have been um, just northwest of here. Mm -hmm. And as she walked by every day to school, he, you know, he became he just enamored. Fell in love. He became enamored of her, okay. and so they later <laughs> married. And um, then in later years, she actually became the librarian here. When this building became the library, she served as the librarian here. Okay. So um, some of the stories that we'll talk about um, stem from Miss Molly's love for this building and how um, a lot of people feel like she is still attached to it um, because it was a large part of her history. Hmm. So um, people think that she, like her energy or something might still be here yeah, or some um, kind of picture on the air? We've had, when the library was here, um, they would you know, they'd shut everything off when they went home at night and come back and the computers would be on, the lights would be back on and, and they would say, um, you know, Miss Molly, look, you know, we, we just need this stuff turned off. Um, my sister was Main Street director here and she, her office was upstairs where our crystal is right now. They would lock the door um, between the downstairs and the upstairs at night and she'd come back in the morning and the door would be, be open and they, they, Miss Molly just liked free reign in the building. Um, when we do uh, tours, which we occasionally do, um, this is always a good spot for um, orbs, for people to get orbs. If you ask Miss Molly um, for her picture and aim your camera at the tower, uh, more times than not, you're going to get a nice um, orb hanging around the tower. So an orb sometimes is like a, a spot on the camera It's a ball uh, of energy. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and they're usually very pronounced, defined um, orbs that you get here at the tower. Wow, oh my goodness. So it's historic and it's beautiful mm -hmm. and it has stories attached. It has stories attached. And, um, and then you've had an experience here that was quite um, odd. Um, we've had a lot of experiences here. <laughs> Tell me about odd. that. Um, are you talking about the one when they were fixing to renovate it? Yes, I'm talking about the light story. Yes, okay. Um, so it has had many purposes, the building has, and it sat vacant for several years. Um, before the Chamber of Commerce was going to move here. So they were uh, renovating and they wanted to get it as true as they could to period. And so coming in and getting the light fixture so they could replace them with the correct ones. And so I met them here one day, um, the engineers, architects, and a couple of the men that worked for the city and unlocked the doors and we came in and they went um, up the back stairs to uh, the landing Mm -hmm. and got the ladder out and two or three men got up there and took the fixture down and we came back down and as you are exiting back out the side door um, I just happened to glance up to the front of the building and the lights were on and I so I yelled who turned the lights on in the front of the building and I walked up the hallway and flipped the light switch and the lights went off and went out the door and I'm still fussing about somebody because you weren't supposed to go around in the building it was right. being in and they said, Miss Odom, there's no power to this building. Didn't you see us just handling the, the bare wires on the light fixture? There's no power. And I said, well, I just turned the lights off. So <laughs> something's powering the lights in the front of the building. So um, that was pretty a pretty good experience for me, a personal experience. You know, I don't ask people to believe in the paranormal. Um, I just ask them to not disbelieve and keep an open mind because you never know when um, something might happen to you that that's going to make you a believer. Oh my goodness, that what a crazy story! It was, and I mean you, you can't argue with personal experience. No, but and then also you can't argue with the stories, like the the story about Molly. Um, was it Molly that was, was up Molly, in the tower? Molly Thurman. So tell that story again. About yeah, he, he he's working on the tower, and she just walks to school, and then she kind of becomes part of the building. She does. And her her history is so tied with the building. And that's true. It is true. Um, and so 
I, I think your energy maybe lingers, you know, and it's it's a nice energy. It's nothing negative. Um, there are other stories um, here of a man named Robert that um, died that was attached more to the land. Um, he died on the road. Um, we, we had a friend who was a, a professional psychic medium, and so she came in and was able to um, to come up with these answers for us. But uh, when we have asked questions with Robert, we do get responses on our EVP. So that gave it some credibility that um, that what she was finding out then, then held true. Um, the other spirit that is said to be here is a four-year-old girl named Elizabeth. Um, the room over behind you was the children's library, hmm. and that's where she hung out. And um, her spirit, um, I guess, lived across the road, is what the, the psychic said, that she lived across the road. And across the road was a boarding house, and then on this, where the bank is now, and then, of course, there are houses here. So either, either road um, would have been possible as a residence for a little girl named Elizabeth. So, um, you know, a couple different entities that we, we you know, we claim and, and work with, so. And of course, like every ghost story, uh, only the be most beautiful people are <laughs> happen to be in the stories. I think that's ironic. That they're the most beautiful. Yeah, that's what Dale says all the time. It's, it's the only the pretty is the most beautiful person. Um, <laughs> it's well, the weirdest well, I, thing. And I've not seen them. Um, I, like I said, my the lights here was yeah. was my personal experience that that I can really um, account for. Um, so things being moved mm -hmm. um, have happened. Um, I think that that at one time the door opened, we heard the door open and close and there was no one down here. Um, so, you know, occurrence is more than actually getting to, there are places in, in town where people have seen apparitions, but, but we haven't actually seen the apparition here, but that would be cool. Maybe we'll catch one tonight. We're gonna see. Yeah. So let's check it back in with upstairs and see what the camera is picking up. Um, I would definitely call this a successful ghost hunt, though I didn't catch no ghost and I don't have one in a bag. I did have an awful lot of fun. I mean, we had a pretty good time just looking for them. We did have some very unexplainable results on our little doodads here. And uh, overall, yeah, definitely, if nothing else, it was super cool to learn the history of this building and, and just to walk around and look at it, much less learn the legends and lore of the town, you know. We, even, even if there's no Ghostbusters and we're not gonna put one in the pack, <laughs> We still have had an amazing time and learned so much and just hearing the stories that they had to tell about this community and, and the way that it was put together is pretty awesome. Very well said. Yeah, see, we don't always have to know. When you go hunting, it's not about the killing, it's about the hunt. And that's what we have to tell everybody. It's not. Hunting is not about the harvest. It's not about what you kill or capture. It's just about, you know, the experience and the going and looking. Good golly, Miss Molly. Well, Miss Molly said that she's sleeping today, but if we'll come back tonight, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she says, welcome to the tower, girls. No, it was a lot of fun. We, uh, we got some good readings on here, some crazy readings oh, on the yeah. little machine throughout some of the rooms. It would be cool to go in the tower, but this just overall getting to walk around and, and look at the building, look at the stuff has been pretty awesome. I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all inviting me to come and do this. Same here. It was a lovely experience. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that, that was fun. Well, we had, uh, we've explored the building from top to bottom and uh, we actually had some evidence. We really did, um, you know, not as much as we were hoping for, but I think it was, it was, it gave us a lot more insight than we had. I mean, this building has never been explored before. We got special permission to be here. Yeah. We explored the corners, we explored the floor, the doors, and uh, Crystal and Samantha were just on it. They were exploring every little corner, and um, it was a really fun hunt. Yeah, and thanks for all the hospitality from the folks here in Chipley and Washington County. It's, it's been a wonderful evening. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, and we got lots of other ghost and monster stories and all kinds of stuff here on uh, Two Egg TV, so uh, settle in and watch some of that and enjoy your Halloween evening. Uh, for Two Egg TV, I'm Dale Cox. And I'm Rachel Conrad. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.